Alright, so in this video we're going to be going over the bleeding control primary assessment. You're dispatched to a private residence for a male in his late 40s who apparently fell on a table saw with his forearm. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to take my standard precautions, ensure my scene is safe, progress this, my scene safe. This scene is safe. Okay, it looks like I've got one patient that's going to be a mechanism of injury. At this time I am going to have a partner hold manual inline stabilization and I'm going to consider ALS resources. So as for my general impression, I'm walking up, what do I see? You see a patient lying in a pool of apparently his own blood. He's bleeding profusely from his left forearm. Okay, so that sounds like a life threat to me. Immediately I'm going to uh, take some 4 by 4s and apply some direct pressure to uh, that forearm. Direct pressure does not control the bleeding. Okay, I'm going to have my partner take over direct pressure while I'm going to uh, apply a tourniquet. I'm going to go about 2 inches above the side of the bleeding. With my partner controlling direct pressure, I'm actually going to undo it and go above for that. So about two inches above, I'm sure that's all good. I'm going to continue tightening until bleeding stopped and I can no longer feel a peripheral pulse. Bleeding been controlled with the tourniquet? The bleeding is controlled with the tourniquet. Okay. So with that uh, control, I'm going to move back up to um, my AFPU. Sir, what's your name? Jeff. Jeff. What city are we in, Jeff? I'm in San Diego. What year is it today, Jeff? 2020. Okay. Um, my patient is uh, alert and oriented times three. Tell me what happened today, Jeff. I was just cutting some wood on my table saw, and I extended myself a little too far, and I slipped and fell right on it. Okay, alert and oriented times three with full recollection of the event. Moving into my ABCs, he's got a patent airway because he's able to talk to me in full and complete sentences. Uh, what's he breathing at? Breathing at 22 times a minute, labored but effective. Okay. Uh, do I see any uh, injuries that would compromise breathing? No. Okay, my partner's going to get a room air O2 sat while I'm going to throw him on high flow O2, just judging by the mechanism, that elevated rate, the fact he's tachypnic. I'm going to go about 15 liters via non-rebreather. Room air O2 sat comes back at 91. 91%, okay. We're going to continue him on that high flow just for the fact that he might be a little shocky. Other things I want to assess, that circulation. I'm going to immediately do a blood sweep, make sure that I'm not missing any other major bleeds. Check into the head. Going down the chest. No additional bleeding. Okay. Abdomen. Negative. Okay. I'm skipping that left arm for now just because I don't want to contaminate my gloves, make sure I'm not seeing any blood elsewhere, and then finishing up on that. Do I see any other bleeding other than stuff that's already been controlled? No additional bleeding. Okay. So I've got my ABCs taken care of. I do want to continue treating him for shock, so now we would move him onto our gurney supine. Um, for that shock management. One other thing I do want to get, what's his skin signs? Pale, cool, diaphoretic. Okay, so that's also confirming that he is a shock patient. I'm going to want to continue down this route. As we get him supine on the gurney, cover him in a blanket, keep the ambulance to 85 as we rapidly transport to our nearest trauma center.